Blueprint node cleanup. So basically, Epic went through and they cleaned up the way a lot of the Blueprint nodes look to make them more uniform. On the right hand side, we see 4.14. And on the left, we see 4.15. You'll notice a few changes. The primary one is your conversion nodes, your addition, multiplication, subtraction, converting from one to the other. They're now uniform with the rest of the Blueprint nodes. No longer are they the unique square edge, but they have the more rounded edge like every other node. You'll also notice that the icons have become much smaller and space is less wasted. Now things butt up against each other rather than having extra spaces to make the nodes much larger. Basically, they went ahead and they compacted a lot of things, cleaned them up and made them much more uniform. So now all your nodes look the same rather than different. There are other examples inside the engine, which you'll find as you're exploring, but for the most part, it was just a cleanup in order to make the blueprint nodes more uniform. Function input and output cleanup is pretty simple. Prior to 4.15, if you had a new function and you were going to add inputs and outputs, it would follow a unique way of doing it. You had the ability basically to add and subtract rather than following our normal flow user experience. This is what I mean by the flow user experience. You can see a plus button and it tells you what you can do. So now in 4.15, if we were to have a new function, and let's call this test function, you're now going to notice in our details panel, we have a different setup for input and output. If we compile and save, you'll see it follows the same basic format. We could plus over this and add a new parameter for input and output. And our bottom part here is going to be slightly different. It's going to be more compact. Not a big change, but basically thought it would be mentioned that they are streamlining everything to make look, everything look more compact and the same. Now in terms of blueprint function libraries, let's say we we're to add a new function library and open it up. You're going to find it follows the same format. So pretty much anything dealing with functions and events, inputs and outputs are going to have our new setup. So for example, custom event, it would help if I was actually in the graph, custom event, and we look at our inputs, it now follows the same suit. So that's it, small change just to make things more uniform and tidy things up a little bit. New in 4.15 is a global editor preferences. What do I mean by this? Well, let's go to our editor preferences and click on global. It's simply a new place for them to put a global setting that affects all editors. As of 4.15, we only have one option. So I'll go ahead and show you what this means. By default, if you're to open more than one content browser, so in this case, I'll open content browser two, you'll find that it shows this. It shows your content, but our directory or our sources panel is hidden by default, as you can see here. If we were to enable this option and go ahead and open up a content browser, you'll now find it's open by default. Small little change, but it's a nice quality of life feature. That's simply the only option in here now, but it's nice to know that this was added and in the future we'll have more settings that globally affect our editor. The new color grading controls are basically meant to mimic more like film and cinematography when you're attempting to do color grading. They basically added in color grading wheels. Well, what do I mean by that? For example, in our post process volume, we have a color grading section. And if we were to open up something like, let's say our global, we're now gonna find a changed look. We no longer have our color picker, we have color wheels. What do I mean by that? Well, let's open this up again, and now we can find it. And you'll find something akin to your standard cinematography color wheel settings. We have the ability to change on all four axes. We have the ability to set our colors using our wheel setup. So anyone who uses standard color grading controls inside of popular cinematography packages should be used to this. And it brings a nice bit of refinement to the color grading setup. In 4.15, blueprint nativization will become standard and no longer experimental. Now blueprint nativization is basically the ability for the engine to take the blueprint code 
and to try to bypass the virtual machine it uses and convert it to C++ code. No, it's not going to convert it to human readable code. It's going to make it very compact, but it will give you an improvement with certain things because certain things in C++ are faster. One example through testing that I found is things like looping definitely gives you back some performance. As an example, I loop through about a thousand objects, creating them and then destroying them. In blueprints, it took roughly a thousand milliseconds. In blueprint nativization code, it took roughly 800 milliseconds. So it's a decent improvement for math heavy and loop heavy things. Now in order to use this, you need to actually turn it on. Inside of 4.15 in the project settings, in packaging, you will find a blueprints and nativization section at the bottom. By default, the nativization method is disabled. If you wish to turn this on, you have two options, inclusive and exclusive. If we turn on inclusive, it's basically going to attempt to nativize any blueprints that are available and that it can do. Not everything can be, but anything that can be, inclusive will do it. Now, if you want only some of them to be nativized, you want to use the exclusive method. What that means is items that are chosen to be nativized will be nativized. Everything else will not be. Now you have two ways of doing that. There's a drop down here where you can add individual assets. In this case, I could add my nativized cube asset and it will add it to my list. Or you could go to the blueprints themselves and nativize them in the options. Under class settings, Actor Blueprints will have a nativize option. So if we check this, this blueprint will be nativized because I'm using the exclusive option. And you'll find all your other blueprints have the same basic thing. We can go here, we can go to class settings, we can find nativize. So at this point, if I was to compile this and cook it for building, only this blueprint will be nativized and nothing else will be because the default is not. Now do note, there is a note on here that says all super classes must also be nativized. What that means is if I have a child of my cube and the cube is not nativized, then the child cannot be nativized as well. So your parent classes have to be. That is what blueprint nativization is. It is out of experimental in 4.15. You will find there are some issues. For example, I found the new actor sequence component caused a crash if it was enabled on a blueprint and I try to nativize it. So it's probably smarter to maybe just try to nativize everything and see if you have an issue. And if you do, you can just simply disable it and then go through blueprint by blueprint and try to approve it. Now again, note, this isn't something that's going to magically convert all your code to C++ and it will be running faster. This is an attempt at making certain functions, certain events and calls run in C++ by converting them over and there are still some issues and the majority of the time it's going to be on things that are heavy. For example, printing a screen, probably not going to be much of an improvement if you're just nativizing that. UMG display, probably not much of an, a nativization improvement. Looping through 2000 items, you're going to see an improvement. Heavy math, you're going to see an improvement. So keep that in mind, this isn't a magic bullet, it's just something intended to help.